My thing I say with fakes, fake shoes for a fake person. What are you? What's going on guys? Welcome to Soul Stage. We are doing another episode of Life of a Sneakerhead. Yeezy edition. Okay, we're here with our friend Brian, AKA Visual Philly, AKA Philly Flicks, AKA a huge Yeezy enthusiast. And we are gonna be breaking down the entire Yeezy line from Nike to Adidas. Yo guys, so today we're gonna be looking at the most influential sneaker line, in my opinion, since Jordan Brand. From that old school Nike to that new school Adidas. And we might even have a special guest. Here's the Yeezy sneaker line breakdown. Let's, Let's go. go. So Kanye's sneaker endeavors didn't start at Nike at first initially. He had collaborations with Bape, being in 2007 with the college dropout Bapesta, and then he moved on to his Martin Louis the King phase, everything all high fashion. Louis Vuitton Don. And it's kind of weird because like Kanye West was first initially known for those loud, vibrant colors, those polos with pop. the collars pop. And then he just transitioned over to a more high fashion approach. So it was definitely like, you know, you could see the different phases of his life at that point. But with the Louis Vuitton collaborations, he did shoes modeled after every influential artist in his life, being Don C, Ivan Jasper, mm -hmm. and Mr. Hudson. But since we don't have any of those shoes on hand, we're just gonna skip right over to Nike. The, actually, the Bape Stock collabo, it had the college dropout bear on it, but it came out pretty much during like the graduation album, yeah, 2007. 2007. I would say like that would has that has to be his first like you know signature shoe, even though that, that shoe wasn't widely available, super limited. I mean, at this point in time in the game, you'd be lucky if you found a dead stock pair. Well, I would just say based off the Bathing Ape and the Louis Vuitton collab, already you knew Kanye was on something else. Without further ado, the Nike Air Yeezy 1. So after numerous, numerous samples, numerous teaser pictures, celebrities, and Kanye himself rocking unreleased colorways. So these officially debuted on The Ellen Show in 2008 while he was unveiling his new music video for Love Lockdown off the 808s and Heart. Yo, that is crazy to think that Love Lockdown was nine years ago. Yo, let's talk about the shoe real quick though. Like, what are the influences that go into this? It was heavily Jordan brand influence. So everything down to the sole, this was modeled after a Jordan 3. Up here, the upper, this was modeled after a Jordan 5. This is definitely a heavy space boot looking shoe. Yeah. But moving on to probably the hottest colorway, which would continue to influence the next hottest colorway of the Yeezy 2s, this is the Blinks, AKA the black and pinks. Now, I think this was so innovative to have all black and then just accents of pink and then obviously the glow in the dark soul. The first time you saw this shoe, debuted in the Knock You Down video. I gotta stop you for a second because honestly, this is like the longest I've held this pair. And I'm just staring at the detail down to the lace lock. I didn't notice that these were all little Ys here. And then it says Yeezy in the back on the on the pull tab. Brian, correct me if I'm wrong. The Air Yeezy 1 is an influencer shoe. Not that many people even know about this. But then once you get to Yeezy 2, you start to get to that mainstream poppingness. And that's when the hype really, really started. Air, Air Yeezy, Yeezy 2. So we're gonna talk about the hottest colorway in the Yeezy 2 collection being the Solar Reds. Yo, I feel like when this shoe came out, man, this silhouette had never been seen before, especially with these ridges on the side. And then this kind of like this crocodile print right here, it almost gave it kind of like an animalistic feel. Especially because these were initially debuted in the Black Mamba mini movie directed by Robert Rodriguez, Kanye West playing the bad guy himself. Or somebody like him. No, Kanye West. Looks like you can play basketball in these. Yeah. It looks like you can cross train in these. Yeah. This is a top 10 shoe of all time to me. Let's talk about the Red Octobers. Well, the Red Octobers, that was a really, really, really iconic shoe just because that marked the end of the relationship between Nike and Kanye West. But but just the fact that it was all red, it really set off a whole trend of all red shoes. Dude, oh, since, yeah. since 2013 to now 2017, Whoa. Like, there have been a ton of all red shoes. You know shoes. how many colorways are just all red, and everybody's like, yo, that's the red October of that shoe. So the reign of the Nike Adidas lasts from 2008 to 2013, and now we're gonna transition over to the Yeezys. The Adidas Boost 750 Gray. And a lot, I remember when it, this dropped, a lot of people were like, yo, this looks a lot like a Y3. I would say the initial reaction from a lot of people, including myself, because I was expecting something like the Yeezy 2s, the Air Yeezy 2s. I was expecting something to look more like the Nike ones, but this took it in a whole different direction. Yeah. I feel like for a shoe to just be like almost two colors, this really pops. Yeah. Because the silhouette is different. You've never seen a shoe that really looked exactly like this. And then the contrast between the white sole and the gray upper. I would say like with the Yeezy 750, 
Nike, especially with his relationship with Adidas now. Kanye went from the old school Kanye, very loud colors. He really took a minimalistic fashion approach with this one, man. But overall, this is a great silhouette, especially for a first drop, being as is, this is the one that pretty much kickstarted it all. So in the next colorway of the Adidas Yeezy Boost 750 is the Pirate Black. A lot of people, I felt like when they saw the gray ones, they were like, oh man, those are gonna get dirty so quickly. Give me a shoe that I could wear every day. So they gave them the all black. So initially, these were just a rumor at first. No one knew whether it was gonna come out or not until Travis Scott posted a picture on his Instagram for their debut. Here's the thing about Yeezys, right? From what I know, there's a lot of samples that leak that never come out. But so let's talk about the glows. I would say though that I feel like that they worked out a lot of the kinks on this one. Probably the quality is just better. These right here are very special just because these are the only ones out of the entire Yeezy line that still glows in the dark, being homage from you know the Nike Yeezys. I think more so is just for that reason. I think these are built more so for wear and tear versus everything else. Which brings us to our next 750, the chocolates. This is by far the cheapest 750, right? For resale prices. Yeah. The market mm -hmm. price for these right now is what, 800 bucks? I would say like 800 to a grand. And then what, the market price on something like this is what? That's like in the uh, 2K range, I would say. Okay. Wow. And this is what, about 1400? About, yeah, 14, 15. Yo, Brian, we gotta talk about the shoe that you see every day. Literally, I don't care what city I'm in. The Adidas Yeezy Boost 350. Initial reactions to when people saw these, what was it like? immediate instant classic, but a lot of people call that these were just a carbon copy of Roshi runs. I understand the Roshi comparison. I never saw it. Initially, I saw it when people mentioned it, but to me, the silhouette was different. The sole was different. So the Turtle Dub was officially released in June 2015, right after the first 750 release. We don't have the Turtle Doves here. It goes Turtle Dove, Pirate Black, Oxford Tan, and then Pirate Black again. And release two, and then Moon Rocks. It's a huge drawback with the uh, with the first versions of the 350s just because this whole sizing was off, man. So usually before, if you're like a true size nine or a true size 10, you would have to size down, maybe even a size and a half for the shoes to correctly, you know, fit your foot. So what's so iconic about this particular colorway is not the fact that, you know, it was a brand new V1 colorway, but it's more so because in 2015 at the MTV Music Awards, Kanye officially announced his 2020 campaign for presidency as you probably could have guessed by this moment, I have decided in 2020 to run for president. That is a great segue into what is now probably the most popular and widely worn Yeezy shoe ever, which are the Yeezy Boost 350 V2. So this right here is the first official colorway of the V2 series, the Beluga. But yo, they are by far the most comfortable Yeezy. Brian, what are the major differences between the 350 V2 and the 350 V1? All right, so the main differences in the two silhouettes right here is that it has an extended tongue, revamped prime knit. Also, they took out the heel tab right here, which I actually personally think that that was a nice touch, man. So what's cool okay. about these right here are these all dropped on the same day. All right, we'll, we'll call a spade a spade here. Kanye released the same shoe with just different color stripes. All right, guys, so we finally wrapped up everything going from that old school being the Nike Yeezys to that new school being the Adidas. Actually, I almost forgot, but yeah, we bumped into Paperboy during this whole filming experience. So Paperboy is a music artist, but he also owns a sneaker boutique out in San Francisco, and he's also known for eating cereal out of the cream Yeezys. All right, you guys, so we were here at Soul Stage and we bumped into music artist and Yeezy enthusiast, Paperboy. Man, it was so crazy that we're filming the Yeezy video because you are someone who has a very long history with Yeezys and a lot of opinions on the shoe line. Yeah, of course, man, everybody knows I'm Kanye's nephew, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick, we're gonna put you in the hot seat and ask you some quick questions about Yeezys. You ready, Paperboy? Of course I am. Talk to me a little bit about what you think about the Yeezy Adidas line. No matter what you do, who you create new kids with, you always gonna have your first love and your first child always gonna look like your next children. Although the Nike and, and, and Adidas got the feud going between Kanye, you still gonna take features in that love you had. How did you think about the switch from a more sport inspired design here to a more fashion? It's the new wave. The new wave is just casual running. What kind of reactions do you get when you wear Yeezys out? People nowadays, they, um, they don't enjoy their belongings. Me, I'm a firm believer of enjoying everything I have, which are sneakers. Wait, what's your what's your stance on fakes right now, man? My stance on that is I'm not for it because it's just like this. My thing I say with fakes, fake shoes for a fake person. What are you? This could be a trillion dollar company. No matter what, 
Nike will always ring supreme. Those who done your homework, y'all know what this Nike check means. It means victory. So we tuned in here at Soul Stage with the Fung Brothers and me, Paper underscore boy, also Kanye's nephew. You can follow me on Instagram, P-A-Y-P-A underscore B-O-Y. Make sure to check these guys out. Subscribe to their channel. We live. Yep. Yep. Boom. Yo, all right, everybody. Thanks again for watching that video. We are at Soul Stage in Alhambra with the boy Brian from Philly. Follow me on Instagram, Visual Philly. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.